out of the year and you are still seated, you are wrong. Praise, praise, praise the Almighty God. All we want is you, is you. All I want, all I want is you. And we rely, and we say, all we, we want is you. We hunger, we hunger and thirst for you. In a cry, we rely, as we all say, all we, we want is you. All I want is you. Lord, all I want is you, is you, all I want, all I want is you, I hunger, I hunger and thirst for you, in my tribe and weary land, and I say, oh, I want. You. Almighty God, we want to thank you. Thank you because we are nothing without you. Thank you, Father Lord, for bringing us to the sanctuary once again. Thank you for the blessings you have blessed us from January to November 2021. We return all the glory to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord, for all the word from the pulpit that you have spoken to our soul from January to November 2021. Thank you because those words have been keeping us going. Lord, we say, blessed be your name in Jesus' name. Thank you for the word that you have for us today. Thank you, Father Lord, because you will speak to us from your throne in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says the entrance of your word giveth light and understanding for simplicity. Father, we pray that you will simplify your word in our hearts today in the mighty name of Jesus. That both the speaker and the listener we all go with our full blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. We render this environment unconditioned for the evil one and we invite the awesome presence of the almighty God. Thank you, righteous Father, because you've answered our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. You may please sit majestically in the presence of the Almighty God. God bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. We started looking at the sure mercies of David last Sunday. And we read from the book of Isaiah, chapter number 55, verses 1 to 3. But for the sake of some of us that were not around last Sunday, and were not opportune to follow us online, I will quickly give a recap. We looked at the meaning of mercy, and we said, mercy supersedes merit. In other words, wherever mercy speaks, protocols must be suspended. We also said mercy is the engine that drives a man in the direction of destiny fulfillment. And I remember we said for a man to be available and be at his location at the hour of visitation, the issue of mercy can never be overemphasized. 
looked at some peculiarities of David that made his message sure. And the first thing we looked at was repentance. We said, David, whenever he repents, his repentance was always genuine. We underpin this with Psalm 51 verse 1. We looked at humility. That he was always humble. He never allowed his position as a king to affect him. We also talked about gratitude. And we said he was always grateful to God. And I remember we said whenever you are grateful to God you are doing yourself good because you have activated your miracle and terminated your obstacles. We look at his attitude to soul winning. That he was a soul winner and a man that was known with praise. My focus today by the special grace of God will be on you because it's now your turn to receive mercy. David, several years ago, slept with his fathers. There is nothing I can say about David today that can bring him back to life. So as the Holy Spirit releases his word to us this morning, I want you to picture yourself as David. I want you to begin to see yourself as the David of your generation. And that mercy will not lead you in the name of Jesus. I will stick to the same text. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 1 to 3. And by God's grace, I'll be showing us some facts about the sure mercies of David. Isaiah chapter 55, verses number 1 to 3. Oh, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore, do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat, yea, that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me here, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. May the Lord bless the reading of his words in Jesus' name. As it's been portrayed from where we have read, it's clearly written and it's stated there that the first fact about the sure mercy of David is for everyone that thirsts for it. He said, oh, everyone that thirsted, come. There is an invitation for everyone that comes to the sanctuary this morning to cry for mercy. Because God does not ignore the cry for mercy. If and only if that cry is in accordance to his will. When you are crying for mercy and it's not in accordance to the will of God, brothers and sisters, that kind of mercy might not be received. And if you look at your Bible, there were several people that cried for mercy in accordance to God's, God's will and to the glory of God, they got it. In the name that is above every other name. 
every cry of mercy that you have been crying or that will be cried today in this mountain will be received in the name of Jesus. For example, in Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28, you will see the mother of a demon-possessed damsel there. She cried for mercy for her daughter. Unfortunately for her, she got it. If you jump to Mark chapter 9, from verses 17 to 29, you will see the father of the epileptic boy who cried for mercy for his son and he got it. Mark chapter 10 from verses 46 to 51 has always been a good example that we've been using in the sanctuary. That is the story of blind Bartimaeus. He cried on top of his voice to the merciful God and he got it. If you go to Luke chapter 17, from verses 17 to 19, you will read the account of the ten lepers that were healed. Who got their healing by crying for mercy? Don't forget we said last week that a closed mouth, as they always say, is a closed destiny. If you can cry on the top of your voice this morning, the merciful God will be merciful on you in Jesus' name. Two thieves hung side by side behind, beside Christ on the cross. One cried for safety. Safety and deliverance from the agony of the cross. The other one cried for mercy. And even in paradise, the merciful God was merciful unto him. Why don't you cry for mercy this morning? And the merciful God will be merciful on you in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two. You will see a phrase where I read. That says, come ye to the waters. Come ye to the waters. What that means is that the sure mercy of David. To that brother or sister that will receive it this morning. Is limitless. I don't think you understand that. The sure mercy of David is limitless. Because when you go to the river, you go to the river with different containers. If you go there with plastic cup, you will get water. If you go there with mugs, you will get water. You go there with kettles, you will get water. If it's with a bucket, you will get water. You go there with jerry cans, drums, you will get water. But there is no amount of water that you get from it that can finish what you have in the river. This tells us that the merciful God that I'm bringing to you this morning is a source that never runs dry. As you are tapping from it, you will observe that the mercy keeps increasing. That was why when he was, you know, on the cross, pierced with an arrow, and blood gushed out over 2,000 years ago, the blood till today still ticked the boxes for atonement. Just because it's still there. If it were to be my blood, under three hours, everything will finish. So have it at the back of your mind that you have come to meet the merciful God, the one that is source can never dry up. And as you begin to tap from it this morning, I pray that that mercy will be in abundance for you and your generation in Jesus' name. That's what we are enjoying when we visited Calvary, because it blo- his blood began to flow in our veins. I love that song that says, I'm an heir of God. I'm a joint heirs with Christ. I'm an heir of God. I'm a joint heirs with Christ. 
I'm an heir of God. I'm a joint heir with Christ. I'm not a servant in God's kingdom. I'm a son. Jesus, roll your blood. Now flows through my veins. Jesus, roll your blood. Now flows through my veins. Jesus, roll your blood. Now flows through my veins. I'm not a servant in God's kingdom. I'm a son. When his blood flows through your veins, Bible says, he that gives mercy shall surely obtain mercy. Jesus Christ is a merciful God. And I've claimed his blood is flowing through my veins. Definitely, he can never overlook my mercy. When I need that mercy, he must release it. Because where we read said, this mercy that we are talking about is a covenant. No one can change a covenant. Government can change law. But mercy... The sure mercy of David came as a covenant. And I pray that that mercy will work for you in the name of Jesus. As you are here to tap from the source of mercy that never runs dry. To that person with the loudest amen, mercy will speak for you in the name of Jesus. Fact about the sure mercies of David, number three. You will see a phrase from the text that we read, that said, He that hath no money, come. In other words, it is priceless, but not valueless. The sure mercy of David is priceless, but not valueless. It means you can't pay for God's mercy. Because you don't need to beg for what you can afford. If I, if I can afford to be using a Rolls Royce, and in my bank account, I have money that can buy, like, let's say, 10. And I just need one to drive. I know that when they are calling for those that want to buy a car, I don't need to go and cry for it. Because I will be thinking my bank account can settle it. And I will still have excess there to cater for myself. It is priceless, but not valueless. Priceless in the sense that Christ paid for it on the cross. And valueless because that's what you need. To achieve your potentials in life. The merciful God. Will be merciful on you in the name of Jesus. Number four. It entails God. Launching you. Into a boundless experience. That will surprise your enemy. How do I know this? If you look closely to that text, you will see where it says, talks about satisfaction. Going for things that never satisfies. It's only God's mercy that can make a man to be satisfied in life. There are people that have gone all over the world, moving from one place to the other, looking for satisfaction. Some of them return crying. They are even where I was coming from is far better than where I am. Brothers and sisters, mercy supersedes merit. It only takes the merciful God to give you the needed satisfaction. And in the name that is above every other name, mercy will push you to the place of satisfaction. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for you that you will receive God's mercy. That will be so evident that your enemy will marvel at your greatness. Number five. When a man obtains God's mercy, he operates beyond his capacity. There's a phrase in that same text that we read, Isaiah 55, verse 1 to 3, that says, Your soul delights in fatness. No wonder. 
this can be underpinned in Psalm 23 verse 5 where David said thou anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over let's practicalize this if you have a cup that is filled with water to the brim that shows the capacity of that cup and when that is the capacity of the cup there's, that means the person is, you know, within the limit. That cup is within the limit. But when that cup begins to run over, when that cup begins to run over, what it means is that the soul of that person, the person has gone beyond his capacity. That's what it means to me. I pray for you that the Almighty God will so bless you mercifully to the extent that your cup will overflow in the mighty name of Jesus. Like that widow in 2 Kings chapter 4 that came to the man of God. He said, what do you have? Go and take verse, borrow not a few. The blessing of God only stop in the life of that widow when the container finished. So this money, when you are before God, have a blank check before him. Put anything and I can assure you that you won't go home empty in the mighty name of Jesus. Number six, there's no more limitation to anyone that encounters the sure mercies of David. There is no more limitation to anyone that encounters the sure mercies of David. You look at the Bible. Anna. The mercy of God gave her Samuel. And she later had five other children after Samuel. When the door of mercy was opened for an ordinary man, Abraham. God's mercy made him the father of many nations. What that means is that Abraham became the president of presidents. Because the Bible says many nations. Every other nation, they were reporting to one man, Abraham. That's what God will do for you in the name of Jesus. Where they don't have business ideas, they don't know what to do, they will begin to look for you because of the mercy of God. Where families are failing, they will begin to call on you for advice. When people are short of ideas, they will contact you because God has been merciful on you. And that will be the portion of the person with the loudest amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number seven, the mercy of God is only for those that obeyed him completely. It's for those that obeys completely. If you look at verse three, you will see that phrase there that says, incline your ear. Incline your ear. Because God's mercy will not be activated in your life when you are doing what is outside God's mandate. God's mercy can never, never be activated in a man's life when that man is doing what is outside his mandate. And that was what happened to Joseph while he was in the house of Potiphar. He inclined his ear to the commandment in Exodus 20, 14 that says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Joseph knew there is a negative sign that can block the door of mercy for his life. Joseph, the son of Jacob, despite the fact of all the temptation he faced in the house of Potiphar, days that the woman will come, 
with the seductive clothes. And with a seductive voice crossing her leg, calling her, JJ, when will you consider my proposal? And JJ will look and say, no. If I do this, I will block the door of mercy. You know the story. They lied on him. And he went to the prison. But when the merciful God was merciful on, on him, he got to the prison. They gave him a prison garment, Abby. But the merciful God turned it to a princely one for him. That's what mercy will do for you in the name of Jesus. Number eight. The door of God's mercy is in our text. It's forever open to anyone that is willing to come in. Isaiah 55 started with invitation. Come. Whether you have money, come. If you don't have money, come. In other words, the sure mercy of David that we have been talking about never discriminates. Whether you are black, you will get it. If you are white, you will get it. If you are rich, you will get it. If you are poor, you will get it. Because when the merciful God is in action, your situation does not matter. If Mephibosheth that was lame on his feet can eat continually on the, on the, on the king's table, how much more? I pray for you, where you least expect you could get to in life, mercy will take you there in the name of Jesus. Having said all that we have said about mercy, do you know that some cry of mercy cannot be answered by God? Some cry of mercy cannot be answered by God. I will read from Luke chapter 16. Verse 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented with flame. Alas, the cry of the rich man was too late. In other words, there is no mercy in the grave. No mercy in hell. It is now that you can cry for mercy. It is now that you can cry for salvation. No wonder when the thief that cried for mercy on the cross cried and Jesus answered him, he said, today I will remember you in paradise. There is no mercy in the grave. Maybe you are here or you are listening to me anywhere all over the world and you have been postponing the day of your salvation. If you die now, mercy hands. It's now that you can cry for salvation. Romans chapter 10 verse 10 says, With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. But with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Why don't you use what you have to confess Christ this morning? And it's going to be merciful on you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's stand to our feet and cry to the merciful God. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Lord of Jesus, oh, 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 precious is that blood that makes me white as snow. Oh, 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 I know.
Christ and if you are safe your prayer will just be Lord have mercy on me in the mighty name of Jesus open your mouth and pray Lord have mercy on me in the name of Jesus he knows your name he knows your secret life Lord have mercy on me in the mighty name of Jesus without your mercy there is nothing I can do I trust in the grace and the mercy of the almighty God over my life in the mighty name of Jesus have mercy on me in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Thank God for the grace of salvation. Now that we are all safe, we can cry for mercy together. And the first prayer point will be pray will be, Oh Lord, at the top of your voice, Oh Lord, Oh Lord, by your mercy, where others have failed, let me succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. Where others have failed, Lord, let me succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. Like David succeeded, and his mercy was sure. Where others have failed, Lord, please let me succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. Where others have failed, let me succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, righteous Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You will say every struggle in my life by the mercy and favor of God put an end to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Every struggle in my life by the mercy and the favor of God put an end to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Everywhere I've been struggling let your mercy nullify it. Let your mercy crush it in the mighty name of Jesus. Reba shepe yeke broke as Malika sunda yaka troka sanda yaka mu Mareke sunda yaka trika zia Let your mercy speak for me In the mighty name of Jesus In Jesus mighty name we are praying You will say anywhere I've been disgraced Anywhere I've been humiliated My father, my father Arise today And provoke my relevance In the mighty name of Jesus Provoke my relevance by your mercy in the mighty name of Jesus, everywhere I've been disgraced, everywhere I've been humiliated, Lord my Father, arise for my sake, Father by your mercy, and provoke my relevance in my generation, in the mighty name of Jesus, in my environment, in the name of Jesus, in my situations and circumstances, Lord let your mercy show forth for me in the name of Jesus, thank you righteous Father, in Jesus mighty name we are praying. Almighty God, we want to thank you. Thank you because you are a merciful father. Thank you, Father, because of your mercy that you have released to us abundantly today. May your name be praised in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, as we go this week, let your mercy begin to speak for us everywhere we go. In the mighty name of Jesus. That wherever your mercy will not reach, we will not go there. In the mighty name of Jesus. By the time we see ourselves next week, let our testimonies be accountable. In the mighty name of Jesus. And so shall it be for us in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. And the church of God will shout a powerful, Amen. Hallelujah.